You are at kilometer 35, mile 22 of the marathon, or perhaps at kilometer 18, mile 11 of a hard long run. Everything is going according to plan. Your breathing is rhythmic. Your legs are tired, but they are moving. And then, bang, your quadriceps or your calf muscle locks up. An excruciating pain paralyzes you. The muscle turns into rock hard stone. You can see it pulsating and twisting under your skin. You have a cramp, you stop. You try to stretch and panic. And immediately your mind goes to the standard checklist. What did I do wrong? Did I not drink enough water? Did I forget my salt pills? Should I have eaten that banana at the last aid station? Listen to me carefully. If you go back and drink three gallons of water and eat a crate of bananas, you will still cramp. For decades, the sports drink industry and locker room bro science have sold us a lie. That cramping is a plumbing problem, dehydration, or a chemistry problem, electrolytes. Modern science has proven that this is false. A cramp does not start in your stomach. It starts in your spine. It is not a nutritional problem. It is an electrical problem. It is a short circuit in your nervous system. Today, we are going to dismantle the myth of magnesium and salt. We are going to analyze the theory of altered neuromuscular control. I will show you exactly why pickle juice works instantly. And it's not because of the sodium. And I will give you the only strategy that actually prevents cramps, specific neural training. Part 1. The Dehydration Hoax, the Circuit Breaker Analogy. Let's start with the hard data. If cramps were caused by dehydration and a lack of salt, then they should logically happen mostly on hot days to runners who sweat the most. However, research tells a different story. In landmark studies on ultramarathoners, specifically by Dr. Martin Schwellness, scientists measured blood sodium and magnesium levels immediately after athletes crossed the finish line. The result? There was absolutely no significant difference in electrolyte levels between the athletes who cramped and the athletes who did not. Both groups had the same salt levels. Both groups had the same level of dehydration. Even more convincing, swimmers get cramps in cold water without sweating. Musicians get cramps in their fingers without running a single step. So what is happening? Imagine your body as a house. When you cramp the lights go out, you're trying to fix it by pouring water into the pipes, drinking fluids, or adding salt to the kitchen. But the problem isn't the plumbing. The problem is that the circuit breaker in the basement just tripped. Treating a cramp with water is like trying to fix a blown fuse with a garden hose. It is the wrong tool for the wrong system. Part 2. The Cause. Gas Pedal versus Brake Pedal. To understand the cramp, you must understand how your brain communicates with your muscles. There is a traffic control system inside your muscles that regulates tension. This system consists of two sensors. One, the muscle spindles, the gas pedal. These sensors detect when a muscle is stretching. When they sense a stretch, they send a signal to the spinal cord. Contract, we are stretching too far. They are the excitatory signal. They tell the muscle to go. 2. The Golgi Tendon Organs GTO, the brake pedal. These sensors detect a tension. When the tension in the muscle becomes too high, they send a signal. Relax! We are going to tear! They are the inhibitory signal. They tell the muscle to stop. In a fresh, well-rested runner, the gas and the brake work in perfect harmony. But what happens when you run faster or longer than you have trained for? What happens when neuromuscular fatigue sets in? The system crash of fatigue causes a malfunction in the software. 1. Fatigue makes the muscle spindles gas hyperactive. They get stuck in the on position. 2. Simultaneously, fatigue puts the Golgi tendon organs break to sleep. They stop sending the relax signal result. The alpha motor neuron in your spinal cord starts receiving a barrage of messages. Contract. 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 
and absolutely zero messages to relax, the muscle obeys. It contracts violently and uncontrollably, and it stays there. This is a cramp. It is a neurological glitch. It is a system that has lost its braking mechanism. This is why cramps almost always happen towards the end of a race, or when you are running at a pace you are not conditioned for. It is the failure of the nervous system to handle the load. Part 3. The Emergency Reset Button. Why Pickle Juice Works. Here is the smoking gun that proves the problem is neural, not chemical. You have likely heard that many elite runners drink pickle juice, or eat mustard, when they feel a cramp coming on. And the strange thing is that the cramp stops almost instantly, within 30 to 60 seconds. Think about this logically. If the cause was a lack of salt, it would take at least 15 to 20 minutes for the salt in that juice to be digested, enter the bloodstream, travel to the leg, and enter the cell. How is it physically possible for pickle juice to work in 30 seconds? It hasn't even left your stomach yet. The answer lies in the TRP channels, transient receptor potential. These are sensors in the back of your throat and esophagus. The sharp, acidic, shocking taste of the vinegar in the pickle juice triggers these sensors violently. This sensation sends a massive shock signal to the brainstem. This neural shock interrupts the malfunction in the spinal cord. It effectively hits the reset button on the alpha motor neurons. The strong sensory input from your mouth distracts the nervous system and stops the short circuit in your leg. It is a neurological hack. You are not replenishing electrolytes, you are rebooting the software. Exclusive content for members. Understanding neurophysiology is the key to unlocking the next level of performance. Beyond cramps, there are many other ways the nervous system sabotages your performance, from central governor fatigue to sleep architecture. In the members area, we are preparing deep dive content on biomarkers, advanced recovery protocols, and how to train your central governor. If you are interested in the deep science behind performance, consider joining the community. But let's get back to the problem. How do you train so you never need the pickle juice in the first place? Part 4. The Permanent Cure – Training the Nerves The pickle juice is an emergency brake, but we want to prevent the crash. How do we do that? By training the brake pedal with the Golgi tendon organs to stay awake even when tired. Solution number one, the principle of specificity. The number one reason you cramp in a race is simple. You are running faster or longer than you practiced. If you always train at six kilometers per hour, nine minutes, 40 seconds per mile, and in the race, you try to run five minutes, 30 seconds per kilometer, eight minutes, 51 seconds per mile, your nervous system is in uncharted waters. The muscle spindles freak out because of the unfamiliar frequency and intensity of the contractions. The solution is not magnesium. The solution is race pace training. You must expose your body to your specific race pace, especially when you are tired. You need tempo runs and fast finish long runs. If you want to run a marathon at 5 km per hour, you must have logged significant volume at that exact pace during training. You need to inoculate your nerves against that specific stress. A cramp is the penalty for a lack of specificity. Solution number two, plyometrics, training the brakes. Remember the Golgi tendon organs? The brakes, we can train them. Plyometric training, box jumps, pogo hops, skipping, teaches the nervous system to handle the stretch shortening cycle more efficiently. When you do plyometrics, you are subjecting your muscles to rapid stretching and contracting forces. This increases the tolerance threshold of your neural sensors. You are teaching them to accept high loads and rapid stretching without sending the SOS signal, the cramp, to the spinal cord. Two sessions a week, just 10 minutes of jumps can save your race. Solution number three, strength training, the chassis. A weak muscle fatigues faster, and as we established, cramps are caused by fatigue. When your glutes get tired at mile 18, they stop working effectively. They check out. This forces your calves, a much smaller muscle group, to do double the work to push you forward. The calf overloads. It fatigues, it cramps. 
The cramp in your calf is often not a calf problem. It is a weak glute problem. Heavy resistance training, squats, deadlifts, delays the fatigue of the prime movers, protecting the smaller secondary muscles from overload and neural short-circuiting. The race strategy, pacing as medicine. On race day, your best defense against cramps is not salt. It is self-restraint. If you start the race 10 seconds faster per kilometer than you trained for, you are accelerating the onset of neuromuscular fatigue. You are frying your nervous system. If you have a history of cramping, a negative split strategy, starting slightly slower than your goal pace is mandatory. You allow the nervous system to adapt to the load gradually, rather than shocking it from the first step. And yes, carry a small shot of pickle juice, mustard packets, or a spicy candy. If you feel that first ominous twitch, you know the warning shot before the cramp, take it immediately. The sensory shock might reset the nerve before the muscle locks up completely. But don't rely on it. Rely on your training. Summary. Stop blaming your nutrition. A cramp is a humbling message from your body. It is saying, you asked me to do something you did not train me for. You are not missing salt. You are missing specific conditioning. You are missing strength. You are missing race pace adaptation. Stop looking for magic electrolyte powders. Start training your nervous system to handle the pressure. Avoiding cramps requires perfect synchronization. Your race pace must be aligned with your body's cramp threshold. You need to know exactly how hard to push in your tempo run to trigger adaptation without burning out the system. If you are tired of watching your races fall apart at mile 22, if you want a plan that isn't based on luck but on neurophysiology, the process is simple. Send me an email at jimkriak at gmail.com with subject no cramps or training plan. Let's build an athlete who doesn't short circuit. Running coach Dimitris, MSC. Your running journey powered by science.